Hello and welcome. I'm Jona Othold, and in this video, I'll talk about guided cluster aggregation, our new approach to generalized category discovery. Now, what is generalized category discovery? Basically, it's a more realistic and challenging variant of semi supervised learning. Standard semi supervised learning assumes that labeled and unlabeled data contain the same classes. But this assumption might not hold in practice. There could be new classes in the unlabeled data as well. Generalized category discovery, or GCD, is a task that takes this into account and requires both correct classification of known classes as well as accurate discovery of novel ones. Previous work in this field mostly focused on learning suitable representations that accurately capture both known and novel classes. The classification step itself usually directly assigns the samples to a target class, often using a simple semi-supervised k-means clustering. But we don't know if that's the best way to do it. Research in self-supervised learning has shown that the learned representations often have very homogeneous neighborhoods, so a sample's nearest neighbors are very likely to be from the same class as the sample itself. The idea behind guided cluster aggregation is to leverage this property to build our clustering from the bottom up, moving from small clusters to the target classes. On a high level, our approach consists of three stages. First, we need a pre-trained backbone. For this, we can use one of the, exist of the existing GCD methods, which are orthogonal to our approach. Then, we first learn a first stage clustering that groups the data into many small clusters. For this, we use the scan image clustering method, which uses the k-nearest neighbors of a sample. Finally, we train the final stage, which assigns the samples to the target classes. We create the training targets for this stage by aggregating the k-nearest neighbor graph based on the first stage clustering. Let's look a bit more closely at how these final stage targets are generated. We start off with the k and n graph. Based on the graph, we learn a first stage clustering using scan and use it to aggregate the graph. So each cluster becomes a node in the aggregated graph and the strength of the connection between two nodes is determined by the number of k nearest neighbor relations between them. Now we additionally incorporate the information from the labels to further guide the aggregation process. If two first stage clusters contain labeled samples of the same class, their connection is strengthened. If they are from different classes, it is weakened. So in this example, the yellow samples are from one class, while the blue sample is from another class, and the gray samples are unlabeled. The connection between the clusters containing yellow samples is strengthened, while the connection between them and the cluster containing the blue sample is weakened. The cluster containing only unlabeled data is not affected at all allowing us to effectively use the known class labels without impeding the discovery of novel classes. Finally, we identify the most strongly related first stage clusters based on the strength of their connection in the aggregated graph. We then train the final stage classifier to assign samples from related first stage clusters to the same class. This way, we aggregate the first stage clusters into the larger target classes. So how does it perform in practice? As mentioned previously, our approach can be combined with existing pre-training focused methods. So we combine it with the orig original GCD, as well as the more recent prompt car. For fine-grained classification datasets, such as California birds, we see that GCA substantially improves accuracy compared to the semi-supervised k-means clustering that was used in the original GCD and prompt car papers. For coarse-grained benchmarks, however, there is no clear improvement. We suspect that this is due to smaller interclass similarity compared to the fine-grained tasks, which means that k-means might just already be sufficient for separating the different classes. There are more experiments in the paper itself, but to finish off this presentation, let's look at some qualitative examples of the first stage clustering in practice. Here we see some randomly selected samples from the first 
five first stage clusters that were then assigned to the matchstick class in the final stage. So each row contains samples from one first stage clusters and cluster, and all the samples you see are then assigned to the same class in the final stage. We see that each first stage cluster seems to specialize on a subset of the class. For example, the third row contains images that focus on the matchstick's head. We also see some failure cases. For example, the second row does not in fact contain matchsticks, but probably was misclassified due to the song strong similarity. So it was basically a failure of the aggregation process in this case. Here we see the same for the goldfish class. Again, each first stage cluster seems to specialize on one perspective. For example, the first shows the fish from the top, the third from the font, and the fifth from the side. To summarize, we propose guided cluster aggregation, or GCA, to, to, to solve the task of generalized category discovery. GCA improves accuracy on fine-grained classification tasks, but does not clearly improve performance on coarse-grained tasks. We also investigate the first stage clusters and show that they specialize on different aspects of the target classes. This could also be interesting for future work, for example, in the space of hierarchical classification. That's it from us. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them at the conference. As of now, we are scheduled for poster session one, so that's where, we, where you will find us. Goodbye and see you at WACD.